previously, we were talking about what it means for some set to be bounded above, to, bo to be bounded below, and, and to be, you know, bounded in general. So I thought I would give you an example so, you know, it's clear what boundedness means. So if, if let me make my field the real field, the real number system, then, then if, if I choose a set, let's, let's, if S is equal to the set of one, two, three, and four, then this is bounded. So last time I told you that a set is called bounded, bounded if, if, and only if it's bounded above, bounded above and below, above and below. So we talked about what it means for a set to be bounded above and to be bounded below. It's bounded above if there exists an element which is greater than or equal to every single element in the set. And it's bounded below if there exists at least one element which is less than or equal to every element in the set. So if both of those things are happening, we say it's bounded. So let's prove that this thing is bounded, not prove, prove. It's just, you know, I'm just giving you numbers for, for you to understand what it means. So an upper bound so an upper bound for s would be so a u so u prime would be four because four is equal to or greater than every single element within our set if i was to choose another u let's make it u double prime 100 would be another uh, upper bound right because everything is less than 100 in our set every element is less than 100 so these are every single one of these would be an upper bound and since one exists i can give you an infinitely many number of examples which 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 would you know be an upper bound to s so an upper bound to s would be one the thousand right so you can keep going and the point of me telling you is that if one exists then infinitely many exists so since this is true since at least one upper bound exists we can say that it is bounded is bounded above bounded above now let me let me show you some uh, you, you know lower bounds and so l could be one right l prime could be one look everything is either equal to one or greater than one so clearly one is uh, less than or equal to any element in the set now i could give you another another uh, example of a lower bound negative 534 right this is another lower bound and we can keep going again if one exists then infinitely many others exist so we can say that this is bounded below as well this is bounded below since both are true since it is bounded above and it's bounded below we can say that set s we 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 can see we can see that the set s is bounded that set s is bounded so one thing that you want to note is that note that a set s is bounded if and only if there exists, um, uh, the, the, you know, an A and a B, so that, you know, the, the, so let me just write this another way. We know that S is the set one, two, three, four. So S is bounded if and only if there exists an A and a B in our field such that such that the set is a subset of like it, it lives within the interval of A to B. In particular, A could be any lower bound and B could be any upper bound. So what we're basically saying is that as we we We'll call this set bounded. So let me, I I hope I can explain this with that picture, that if our set is this, so if that's zero and that's one, that's two, that's three, and that's four, then we call this, we call this area S, 
That's the definition of our set. That's what we defined S to be. So what I'm saying is that if S is bounded, then there exists an A and a B so that S could be inside of that interval. So now one possibility of an A and a B, so A could be one and B could be four. So that would be uh, an interval that would start from right here and it would end right here. And that that would be, you know, one possibility of, of a, so this would be an upper bound and a lower bound. So clearly this, this interval encapsulates encapsulates the set S. Now, if I was to choose uh, the, the, the negative 55 as my A, as my A and, and, and 1000 as my B, so that's my B and that's my A, then still, S would still be a subset of this interval. So all I'm trying to say is that if so, so if you have two numbers, right, and together they make some sort of interval, and 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 inside you could put your set, then it's most definite. It's it's it has to be bounded, uh, because because there exists there exist some 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 uh, upper bounds, sorry, lower bounds, and some upper bounds, and whichever one, whichever value you choose for a and b, a will be your lower bound, so it will be your l, and b will be u, your upper bound. So this is a, a lemma. So let's just call it lemma, lemma. Uh, lemma bounded one b point one so you don't necessarily need to memorize this if you understand the topic in general then you don't need to understand this but it's a it's a it's a fascinating thing to think about so if if you just give me any interval and th 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 that and and s is a subset of that interval then automatically you know automatically by by this lemma you would know that s is bounded so I hope this video was helpful.